What, do, what does a truce mean? What does surrender mean? What's the difference between those words? And then, you know, aside from just getting into the definition themselves, thinking, well, did the surrender actually happen? Did the truce actually happen? What would it look like if that truce and that surrender actually happened? Likely, we wouldn't have had, I mean, like one of the answers that I might have is that we wouldn't have a plantation to prison history. We wouldn't have had Jim Crow laws. We wouldn't have black and brown people being demonized along borders. We wouldn't have black and brown people being mass incarcerated in modern day slavery. Um, the justice system would actually be just, which means that if I commit a crime and if you commit a crime, then we would be treated in the same way. None of those things happen. So something of that truce and that surrender didn't hold. So what do we do about that? If we don't have the vision for what it looks like, we'll never get there, right? And if we passively say, well, I, I'm nice to people, that also doesn't fix it either. Civility is great, but um, systematic racism is um, I, the, the entrenchment of racism in our, in our judicial system is, that's the problem. In our educational system, those are the problems. That we're decent to each other, that's, that's nice. But, um, but it actually doesn't fix the problem. It can actually do this sort of cotton candy treatment of the problem. Like I smiled at someone today. Great. And that's good. <laughs> it actually doesn't fix systemic racism. So the real work needs to happen by calling it out when every time, every time you see it. And that can be on small things and large things, and it can't be just for the people who are subjugated to call it out, because those people who are subjugated have less power than the people who are not subjugated. So everybody has some kind of power. Everybody does, right? Um, but it's going to take everybody to fix this. My dad used to say that um, racism was a like a mental illness, and my father was a psychiatrist. So um, when he said this, he meant it more than a metaphor. And he said that as a kind of illness, uh, uh, mental illness, but it was also um, something that was highly contagious. Because you can pick it up just by picking up a newspaper. You pick up a newspaper, and there's some guy who's committed a crime, and he's a black guy, and the way that he's shown is that he already looks like he's a criminal in every way, scary guy. And then there's a quote unquote white collar crime. And that person is shown with their family with a suit on, you know, white man, da da da, sort of humanized by context and legitimized by dress. And you think a child just sees that and immediately thinks, oh, black people are criminals. White people are not. This person's innocent, this person's not. And so you could be a very diligent parent and still your child is being fed this kind of thing, right? So being, being very diligent means to say to your child, why is this picture different than this picture? What's wrong with it? And that is a lot of everyday work. Mm -hmm. And it's, so the flip side of that is that parents um, of black and brown children have to say to their children, yeah, so this is what you have to do if you ever get pulled over by the police because your life is at stake. It's not even fair, the difference in the work, <laughs> right? Because one, one person's life is at stake and the other person is being taught not to be prejudiced, mm -hmm. right? But it's still the work that has to be done. Yeah. Because that child, whose parent might be saying, what's the difference between these photographs? That child might grow up to be a cop one day, right? Because we never know, right? <laughs> we never know.